Greetings, all. Shard Vixen here. I am sorry. I have just windblown hair today. We went on a drive earlier to the ocean for a Mother's Day gift to my friend who is staying here with me, who we can call uh, Thumper. Uh, she, uh, she loves the ocean, and she hasn't seen it in, like, forever. And so, um... I thought as a great Mother's Day gift, rather than buying or something, we'd all just take a drive. It's only an hour, hour and a half, depending on how you drive and the traffic is, to get there. And so we just drove to Florence from Springfield, and then we went up a ways to um, Yachts, which is a tiny little town 20 miles out of north of uh, Florence. And we went, and we... Um, we didn't really socialize with anybody. I have math that we made, and we just stood out on the walkways, everybody doing their six feet distance from each other. Um, not in the family unit, but, you know, other people. And we just kind of looked at the ocean just so that we knew when, when the lockdowns lifted, we're all going to be coming back and spending a weekend take to bring the kids and the dog. Um, but it's a it's an impactful thing to, for a person if you haven't seen it ever or you haven't seen it in a while and you love it. Um, but so the window had to be rolled down as she gets uh, panic attacks and um, heat flashes from her panic attacks. So so my hair is kind of I did redo it. We always have talked about my hair. It's important to me. Uh, this is a uh, pink underneath. See, on one side and then purple on the other. Um, I wanted to show you my face. So, because it hurt so bad today, uh, last couple of days. Um, I am str still struggling. You know, it's not the um, intense fibromyalgia days, but I still, because I, I do a lot in the mornings now. And then, but I have to keep pushing through that. That's one of the things you have to do is push through it. So. So that, see how bad it is right here? And then up along here. And oh my God, it's just, it's so painful. And then it's not too bad on this side. I have some pieces right here. Maybe you can see it. And they rise and they get red and they get hot and they hurt like you wouldn't believe. And, they, and they're just, oh. some days are worse than other days. <laughs> So today, the last couple of days have been really bad for my face. I think because my allergies are affected too, not just the fibromyalgia. Um, I'm breathing all right, but oh, my son, he's been having some hard times. He's sleeping right now because he's just, his sinuses are so bad for his nose. Um, you might hear him snoring in the background. Anyway, today is brain food. And what I wanted to talk about in brain food is radio waves from space. Right. Now, some people believe it's aliens communicating with us, and other people are that it's just natural um, emittance of radio, you know, of what radio waves, like, um, I think, from energy. I don't know much about radio waves. <laughs> All I, I know is that, move, you know, what is it, Independence Day, there's a, a sound that comes out and everybody, and then I think it's Cocoon with Jodie Foster features the radio waves, if I remember right. And if I, and um, what's her name? Jane Foster is chasing after signature lights in the sky, but also tracking radio waves. But I do have an article that I want to read to you that's from, well, CNN. And it's their space and science division. And it says, mysterious radio signal from space is repeating every 16 days. <laughs> um, and I think that's kind of an interesting, how human beings uh, see patterns and, and things like that. And how it can't, be a, it, has to, it can't be a coincidence, can it? Can it be a coincidence that every 16 days there's... Something emitting out there in the place where we can't see it. Um, and this particular one that came out February um, 12, 2020, is that the amazing thing is, I don't know if it's amazing to me, but the amazing thing to them is that it's in a galaxy very close to us. Um, and people are very excited by that. Why? I don't know. So the article says that it's half a billion light years from Earth. <laughs> you know, I mean, they say it's close, but that's like 
a really long ways away in it for us because we don't travel through space but it is very cool i mean if you think about it it's kind of cool um it says fast radio bursts or frbs are a millisecond long burst of radio waves in space individual radio bursts emit once and don't repeat but repeat repeating fast radio bursts are known to send out short energetic ra radio waves multiple times and usually when they repeat, it's sporadic or in a cluster according to previous observations. Okay, so I don't know what that means for us personally. Maybe you guys could, you know, chat about what that means for us. But I do think that in all the stuff, whenever we have information like this, sometimes I feel like that information gets kind of buried. Like nobody really knows some of this stuff is going on. Um, I know that they've been studying radio waves for a very long time. Um, besides the movies that come out, but I, I had a teacher who took us up for, okay, so for school, to become a teacher, you have to take science classes and history classes and math classes that you're going to teach to other people. You also have to take astronomy. Um, I remember I got confused once when I was younger. I was like, astrology? I want to take class in astrology the study of the stars yeah and then then i realized it was a strong <laughs> not astrology um but i still took the class it was really cool because um the school that i originally took it from was uh down in, outside of sacramento and um they had their own what is it called observatory so we got to go in, and not only did you get to see actual pictures from the telescope, but they also had that, um, what is it, the projection that you sit in when it moves like this. And it, it, it shows you the stars and everything. Um, so that was really cool. And then I learned about, you know, more about space than I had known before, beyond our own little solar system. Which is very, but then when I learned it, Pluto was still a planet. And now poor Pluto is no longer a planet. It is a debris or, well, first I thought it was a, a moon with an erratic orbit around Neptune. Is that the furthest one out? And that it and Charon, which is was once its moon, consider its moon, is like really like out there and they're really part of Neptune. Um, now, they just think it's a weird piece of something stuck in a weird uh, orbit of its own out there. I mean, they're not really clear on it, why it can't be a planet, <laughs> except that somehow it's connected to Neptune, <laughs> which is intriguing to me. I'm sure somebody out there smarter than me can explain it in the comments, if they so choose. Um, so... Between September 16, 2018 and October 30, 2019, researchers with the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment and Fast Radio Burst Project Collaboration, wow, that's a mouthful, detected a pattern in bursts occurring every 16.335 days. So not even a fourth of a day, right? Well, no more than a fourth of a day, but less than a half a day. Over the course of four days, the signal would release a burst or two each hour, and then it would go silent for another 12 days. Interesting, right? I mean, it seems interesting. I don't know, you know, how it's interesting, but it does seem interesting. Anyway, so in my astrology class, no, my astronomy class, <laughs> I did it again, sorry. Um, we got to go, well, that was the first time I took astrology. I've had it twice. Um, I had it, so, okay, for those of you who may not un know, and then for those of you who do, it, this will just be a reaching. So you go to school after high school to get an AA or a certificate if you're going into a trading school. You have a choice. A certificate is all the classes that are required without the general ed, which is English, math, science, usually a health class and possibly a PE class. It depends on what school you go to. Uh, I was going to school, the first time I went to school, 
for a general education class. Um, but I quit school in my first year. Maybe this should be a whole different conversation. Maybe I should do a college one. Maybe I will. Maybe I will do a college one. Anyway, so I took astronomy there, but um, I didn't finish up the classes. So the next time I was in school, well, no, the one, two, the fourth time I went back to school, I was going to become a teacher, a, a preschool teacher. What? That's not a real teacher. Well, that's special ed. Well, first it was a preschool, a preschool teacher. Then it was a special ed preschool teacher to work with little kids who were like my son. Um, and it was required to be a special ed teacher, even for a preschool, you had to go to school like you were going to be a general ed teacher. So I had to take astronomy again. So at that time, I was in Redding, California, and the teacher took us up to Hatchet Mountain. And on Hatchet Mountain, in the back, they have satellites. And the satellites do this. They record the radio waves that are coming through the sky. Um, which are pretty cool. I mean, it's these huge, huge radar-like things. It's so awesome to go up there. And they have all kinds. Of, they also have a um, seismograph for the earthquakes and volcanic uh, stuff because it's up there by Lassen Mountain, which if you kind of know your history about California, Lassen Mountain exploded when a volcanic eruption occurred in the early 1900s, so late 1800s. I don't remember the exact date. I'll look it up and put it in a little caption up there. Um, and so you can sit there and watch. I love those. You can watch those little seismographs. It's very cool because it goes as it rotates. It doesn't rotate this way. It goes across that way. Um, anyway, those are really cool to watch too. But they had little, um, I don't know what they TV-like screens that showed when these, how these pulses look like when they come from the sky. So it was really cool. They have a whole bunch of them out there. I don't know what's going on. Anywho's, um, so, I don't remember what I was saying. Okay, don't worry about it. We'll edit that out. We'll come back. Anyhow, so, the fast repeating, okay, so, it said, researchers hope that by tracing the origin of these mysterious bursts, they can determine what caused them. So far, they have traced single and repeating fast radio bursts back to the very different sources, which deep in message. I don't remember what I was talking about. So anyway, yeah, so those those big giant receivers, you know, the satellite dishes that do the receiving, you can walk out there and see them on Hatchet Mountain. It's pretty cool. Um, and they talk about how they collect the information for, for it and everything. And you can actually take your classroom out there, like your kids. Like So if I would, had been come a teacher, I could have taken them out there and we would have looked at that okay. stuff. Okay, so... The fast repeating radio bursts traced FRB 121102 linked back to a small dwarf galaxy containing stars and metals. Um, FRB 180916 was traced to one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way esque galaxy. I love how they say that Milky Way esque galaxy. So it's like kind of there but not. And it's also within a star forming region of the arm. The researchers say. Now, the evidence of the pattern in the signal adds to the question of what could cause these bursts to mint the way they do. Now, in another uh, article, not this one, but in another article, they talk about how, why it might, wouldn't be aliens. Because of the fact that it's too systematically, um, coincidentally, you know, these uh, uh, patterns. So, on... The um, Science Alert, which was also done February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2020, it says the repeating signals from deep space are extremely unlikely to be aliens. Here's why. There are many things in the universe we are yet to understand. It's a big old machine that's just churning out mysteries, and we tiny specks crawling over the surface of a blue dot are doing our darndest to unra unravel them. I just like that. I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing when you talk about it. Um, but recently, news emerged about one of the most tantalizing mysteries. Okay, so, 
we talked about that, you know, the 16-day cycle of the four days of intermittent birth and four days of silence, right? And it says, still don't know the causes of these extremely powerful millisecond blasts of radio waves from up to billions of light years away. Most of them haven't been detected repeatedly. Most of them are wildly unpredictable and only five out of over a hundred have been traced to a source galaxy. Um, it has proven extremely tricky to find a cosmic phenomenon that fits the profile FRBs. Uh, violent, highly magne mag magnetized neuron stars called magnetars are pretty close, but there is some doubt as to whether they can emit the no nova scale energies detected in the fast radio bursts. So the question then becomes, what is making those bursts, right? So, but it says the absence of a solid explanation thus doesn't mean doesn't mean we should automatically turn aliens, as so many headlines have done. When unusual cosmic phenomena appears, rampant speculation arrives at this suggestion all too quickly. These people don't believe this. Invoking aliens has become too systematic, too easy, and too sensationalist a way to get the public's attention. Reminds me of the way we used to invoke gods. So says planetary scientist and astrobiologist, what is an astrobiologist? Charlie Lineweaver of the Australian National University. I want to know what an astrobiologist is. Okay, you have to lay down if you're going to sit there. Everybody loves seeing you, I'm sure, but you have to lay down, Feather. No, you can't go that way because you'll knock You'll knock it off. Is it because I'm wearing the mask? Is that what it is? Is it is it because I'm wearing the mask? Give me the ball. Give me. Oh no. Oh no. The other one's coming. Nope. The other one cannot get up here. Charcoal. Charcoal, come. Charcoal. Oh, charcoal has a strawberry. Wait, wait. Charcoal, show them your strawberry. Show them your strawberry. Charcoal, charcoal, show them, show them the strawberry. There's the strawberry. Charcoal's got the strawberry. charcoal got the strawberry. Get it. Ow, ow, get it. Ow. Don't bite me. Okay, go away. Take your strawberry and leave. I, I realize now I'm crooked. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry, I'm going to rub my nose. Instead of the gods of gaps, we now have aliens of the gaps. <laughs> so this guy thinks it's something else. I fix my mask. My I know I'm reading this article a lot, but it's because I'm sharing it with you guys. Um, in 2017, some phys physician, no, physicists proposed that the fast radio burst signals could be produced by radiation leaking from alien spaceship propulsion systems. That's kind of interesting, but how would the 16... I mean... I'm not one to throw out the idea that aliens are cruising around our galaxies, leaving radio, you know, or emitting radio waves through their propulsion. I just don't understand how that would work for every 16 hours or 16 days. Every 16 days, right? With 16.335, right? Days. I don't know how that, how that works. And the dog just leaned on the thing again. Um... Others have put forward that it could be one-way alien communication. That sounds like something we would do. Send out communication that can't come back. <laughs> we are here, we are here, we are here. But, you know, nobody's going to be able to say, So are we, so are we, so are we. So, um, I think that if we're going to send out communication, we should have a way for it to come back. Like, maybe encoded mathematical information so they could just... Oh, hey, we got this. You know, we're not alone. Let's send it back. But we haven't gotten that far. It says, um, my understanding is that, that those explanations are not excluded by the available evidence. That's from Paul Ginsbar of Cor Cornell University and the founder of AR Xvid. X Xvid. Arvix. R Xvid. It's little a, little r, capital X, little i, v. That's he told Science Alert. But also that they are not required by it in the sense that there remain equally and more plausible explanations that don't employ extraterr extraterrestrial intelligence. One big problem for the alien idea is that the variety of locations and distance involved. 
of the FRBs that have been localized, some are from billions of light years away, and others are from hundreds of millions. I don't know why that's a problem. And so an astronomer, Seth Shostake, Shostak, I apologize for messing you guys' names up, of the SETI Institute, has noted that alone, that alone is reason enough to discount the hypothesis of that FRBs are extraterrestrial communications. How could aliens organize so much of the universe to engage in the broadcasting of the same sort of signal? He wrote that in a blog, so you could probably find it. I will put the links to these so you guys can go check them out. Um, so, I guess that's the thing, you know. It says, there's hardly been enough time since the Big Bang to coordinate such a widespread teamwork, even if you can think of a reason for it. So, you know, I myself don't know what's causing the radio waves. I don't even have a a guess for it or a hypothesis for it. I think it's just very plausible that it could be uh, just from something really large emitting some type of energy. But I wonder, could could it be something big like the destruction of a planet or civilization and that's what we were seeing that's emitting that or some type of, of cosmic creation going on. I don't know enough about radio waves to tell you, but I, I do know they come from radioactive stuff too. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. Do, I like to volcanoes when they erupt, do they emit radio waves? Um, that would be the study of radio waves that I don't know anything about, but I am intrigued by this concept. So any information or stuff you want to share, put it in the comments. Come to my Discord. We can have a conversation about it. Um, we have had conversations in... Uh, I have had such conversations in the past with other people on my Discord. Um, or to the Twitter, Shard Vixen's Twitter. You can leave a comment in my message and we can talk about that as an ongoing thread. Um, but I just thought we'd talk about other stuff. Because, you know, these are the things that intrigue me that I get, you know, tidbits on. And then I... I go and search them out. Anyway, that's it for this particular vlog. Um, I will be back next week with a rambling and or, cross our fingers, maybe a crafting video to start the beginning crafting video. I don't know. As you can tell, I still haven't gotten this part of my stuff cleaned off. That was the plan to do today, but every time I plan to do it, something comes up. All right, so... I am out of here. I will catch you all on the flip side. And everyone stay safe, healthy, and as happy as you can be. Peace, 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 peace.